What's up, y'all? In this video, we're going to take a look at a 1948 Chevy Fleetline or Fleetliner ignition switch. The customer showed me a picture of his, and I'll put a picture of just a random Fleetliner up here so y'all know what we're dealing with. And it is basically a standard GM six cut lock. But prior to 69, a lot of you may know what GM six cut are. It had these had the A and the C and the E keys, but prior to 67, 69 in that area, they used one key and that was the H1098LA. And I'm trying to get, trying to get a few keys so that we can go up here and make a key for this guy. These are sidebar style locks. Uh, they were from 36 to like, what, 94, 2000, even if, with the VATS, even some of them still went up to, to 2000 but you can tell it's a sidebar because it is off center and when i say off center it's off center in the keyway see how it's thinner on this side and thicker on that side that's because sidebar locks had to have room on one side for the mechanism to be and you can see this is the same thing they came in a variety of plug styles these you see two holes this one's a one hole uh, but they were all in, underneath that they were all pretty much the same it was very common to carry different plugs back then and instead of rekeying on site you would just pull that plug and put the new one in but to pull the plug you did have to have a key to turn it so if this was attached in the car still you pretty much just see this you put your key in you turn it to the stop position and then poke down on that which what happens there is you go into the hole just like so all right and what is on the inside of this housing right here there is a spring-loaded pin that pushes up and as you turn it it boop, falls into that you see this 90 degree that pin is stopping it from turning the rest of the way so that's what you have the holes for is you got to put your doodad and just poke it down and turn it the rest of the way now i will mention we did mention this and show it on Saturday Morning Live. I've already drilled the hole for it. That is the only way to deal with these guys if you don't have a key because it is in a sidebar lock and for the most part, you really can't impression it. I know somebody will be like, oh, I impression them all day, but the average person, even me, who's worked with these for decades now, uh, not, not, I can't impression them, I've tried. But to do what you gotta do, you do have to put a tiny hole in there and basically you can you can deduce where to do this because if you had a plug which you don't obviously may not have one but you can see it's pretty much you consider this the back of the plug you consider this the front of the plug and you want to go about halfway and if you're holding it up you look at the keyway right and then right at the top of the keyway you can't really see in there very well you see the wafers in there and then there's a stop basically that's the shoulder stop and that's where you're gauging it from so right about there basically the center if you cut that cut that in half you're doing it at the center and you see if you roll this around boom and your sidebar is there's a channel here that that sidebar goes up into if you're not familiar with the sidebar lock that's what that is we hold this right here that's what we're looking at when you pull the key out that sidebar is poking up into this channel and as you put the key in it sucks it in which allows you to turn it so basically what you do is you have to grab a say a 1 inch drill bit and very very carefully i thought i had kept the footage from this but i didn't uh very very carefully you want to just drill through this layer and once you drill to a certain point, you'll feel a drop and you'll feel a space in there. You wanna be very careful not to drill into the sidebar. So go slow, pull it out, get the debris off, go a little bit slow. And then once you plunge through, there's this little bitty open space and then you'll hit that second layer. Once you feel that second layer, you don't wanna go any further because then you'd be drilling into the sidebar. So at this point, we've got the sidebar accessed and you and to pick a sidebar lock really a sidebar kind of looks like this i'll show you real quick on a piece of paper the inside of that sidebar like there's the bar that's the part you can see right and there's this angle and the wafers 
have a little cutout in each wafer and when the wafers are all lined up six of them they fall into that and unless that sidebar drop that's the theory of a sidebar lock so to pick it you have to push in on the sidebar and to do that i'm just going to take this poker here and i'm just going to push in and i'm actually going to hold it and pull my fingers this way so i'm actually putting pressure this way while i'm doing this you don't have to turn it to pick a sidebar lock you literally just have to wait until you feel this drop down your wafers will get kind of frozen like stop moving it's very very easy for the most part to pick a sidebar lock when you have direct access to that uh, area so i just felt it drop down a little bit so it literally should be picked already yep so we got it turned now on saturday morning live we did take a look at this and what had happened was i got it and i never i've never i can't recall having this happen i got it to the stop position it turns right but what what i discovered was it's not turning all the way back and i kind of got a little panicky thinking i was going to have to drill a hole here because it may have had to turn back the other way but i didn't think that i thought that you turned it all the way till it stopped and you pushed in and indeed, once you get to that stop point, you can actually see the sidebar right here. And once you get to that stop point, you can actually see and feel that spring-loaded pin. All right, let's see, where is it? Right there. So I'm gonna push in, push in on that spring-loaded pin. And we're trying to turn it, and it won't turn anymore to the removal position. We're gonna find that, see there's that spring loaded, you let it go, it springs back out. And what is happening here is it is not letting me go past this. The sidebar, even though it, it picked, it jumped up a little bit and it's actually catching on this lip, which is not letting me turn it to the position to remove it. So we're gonna to have to, you know, realize this after the fact. Uh, that it was touching right there. So I'm gonna grab a piece of shim steel, right? And I'm gonna push down on this and I'm gonna rake it again. And when you, typically when you pick a sidebar lock, I'll show you what I'm doing here. If you're pushing down just on one side, like we're gonna be pushing down right there, right? You rake it and then the sidebar will fall on one side, but not the other. Since we can't access it and we don't really want to drill another hole, I'm going to take this piece of shim material, pick it till the front drops down, which will let that shim slide down a little bit. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, it just dropped. So now I'm going to push it in. All right, and we're going to go a little bit further towards the back. And I can feel this moving as I'm manipulating those wafers. That Okay, it just moved a little bit more. I think we may have actually gotten it, but I'm gonna push that in a little bit more and then I'm gonna pull up and what that's doing is putting pressure almost in the middle of it. And I'm gonna go to the very back, see if those wafers are frozen or not. Okay, yeah, they seem to be, they seem to be still. And uh, while I'm holding pressure out on this, which is pushing down that sidebar, I'm once again, gonna push in on this gets kind of awkward to do this part because you're trying to do several things at once here okay it's not still not going so i'm gonna kind of carefully move this over here and see if we can get that sidebar to do something better than what it's doing okay and then push in and turn all at one time and at some point that thing should oh there it goes all right so now it just moved beyond where it needed to be so we're going to pull that out and we can see it went the rest of the way and that was all that was holding us up we're going to keep turning and as we do it should pop out here in just a sec Oop, there it goes. All right, don't have to turn it a little bit further. 
and then we can just pull the core out. It only goes back in one way. You take that little dot and you go down into the little dot shaped area and you can see the notch cut in it right there for that. And we now have to make a key for this fella, so we're gonna have to pick it again. Now there are a couple of different tools to uh, decode this, but if you do it enough, you can actually pretty closely decode it by sight. I'll go ahead and show you that. Here we've got a A1 bullet, I think. Of course, A1's long out of business, so if you don't have one of these, you probably won't find one. You can see markings on it, six cut, five depths. GM rules apply, so there will not be, a, there can't be a two difference between them. So if you have a one, beside that one can only be a two or a three. It can't be a four because that's more than two. So if you have a two, it's not gonna be a five, it would be a two, three, one, or four. Yeah. Uh, and then of course everything adds up to even. Now that's not a hard, fast rule, I've done a fair number of GMs where it didn't add up to being even. So I only go by that as a guideline, not really a hard, fast rule. Uh, and then, uh, but the hard, fast rule for sure is uh, no, uh, no different to the maxes too. You can't have more than that. Also, one other rule is no more than three in a row. So you're not gonna have three, 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 three. But again, you have people that come along and rekey these locks to whatever they want. So that's not necessarily a hard, fast rule either. That's, that's an original GM rule for sure, but definitely not a hard, fast rule that you wanna to apply to everything. So we're gonna be pushing down on this and raking it until that guy drops down. And we're gonna take a look at these guys and uh, try to visually decode them before we go to town with this. Let me grab this little piece of paper here. And again, one through six, starting on this side. If we look at those wafers, we are gonna take this guy, all right? And uh, basically, I know this is probably not the best view, but what I do when I'm looking at these wafers is I look at all different angles. I'll move it up and down, and depending on the light, you may have to get a flashlight to do this to be able to see you know, how deep they are. But basically, we look for the shallowest one. And if we look at this, we see this one seems to be the shallowest. If this was enough, the shallower it is, the shallower the depth. So the higher it is, in other words, the higher the top of the wafer is, that's the top of the wafer, the higher it is, the shallower the depth. So if it's close to the top, it's a one. This one's not right on the top, so I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna guess that's one or two. That may be a one, but it more than likely is a two on the tip. Looking at that, basing it off of that, we go down to the next one, and then the one beside it, and we can see the one beside it is got a little bit deeper channel there than this one does. And then if you compare this deeper channel to this deeper channel, it's even deeper. So this would be, if this was the only three that we were dealing with, you would go one, two, three, but that's not it. We're gonna go back to the beginning. Look at that, that is pretty deep right there. So I'm gonna say four or five, maybe five, that's, that's pretty dang deep in there. Uh, this one's up a little bit, and it matches this one. So these two look like they're the same. And actually, these three look like they're the same as well. So if I was going to guess, I would say this would be four, three, four. Right? Four, three, four, three. These are pretty close to being the same. Actually, those look like the same depth, so. Four, three, four, three, three, two. Let's write that down. Four, three, four, three, three, two. But we're gonna double check it with this guy. And with this, we just basically push it down in the hole. The first wafer, always this little ridge kind of messes you up on the first one, so. 
if you have this tool, you wouldn't want to really gauge that. Okay, four, it is. You see the line? Uh, that's the line right there. See that little line? If that line is even with the front of it there, that is probably what our cut is. Three is a little bit deep. We're going to say that is a four. Okay, four. Okay, spin it around. Ooh, that looks like a two. Yeah, three sticking up a little bit, so two. I keep hitting the tripod, so let's go four, two. And, oh, that's definitely a three for the three position. Okay, what's next? Uh, a little bit deeper. Sure, your sidebar still dropped. Two. Why was that reading as a two? That is kind of weird. It is reading as a two. So we had three, two. Yep. Next one. It's pretty deep. So they. Nope, it's a three. Okay, so three, and then lastly, three, one, three, one. Okay, I'm gonna go back to that front, front one. Let's see what it comes up with. I don't know about four. It's kind of, you can always cut deeper. If you've cut a four and it's a three, you gotta start over. So let's actually, Let's actually write down three instead of four. Or three. So if we cut it three, two, three, three, two, three, two, three, one. If we add that up, that's uh, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. If we add four, that would be six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 14, 15. That would be odd. So we're gonna go with three, two, three, two, three, one. But we can also double check it. We have this Keydex K4 GM decoder. Uh, Keydex is definitely still in business. I don't know if they still make this guy or not, but uh, basically what we're doing is all in one and we're gonna push this down and open it up so that all the little legs are sticking out and we're gonna kinda carefully, oh shoot, I let it go. That's all right though. We're gonna flip it around and repick this sidebar real quick. And, oh, there it goes. Now, uh, this one, I've never really been overly fond of this guy. And uh, for the reason being is sometimes those legs just don't like going down in there completely. So I'm going to push it down and see what happens. Okay, so there's what we came up with, with the Keydex decoder. And we can see, remembering that now it starts over here. So let's see what it came up with. Three, two, three, two. See, it goes a little bit past it. We're gonna cut shallower. So three, two, three, two, three, Three, two, three, two, three, one. Three, two, three, two, three, one. Okay, that's what we uh, came close to visually decoding it. I'm gonna go cut the three, two, three, two, three, one on my machine and I'll be right back for this GM 26, 25 card. 36 through current. Current being <laughs> late 90s when this machine was made but yeah gm6 cut basically five depths six spaces <laughs> Okay, 
let's go ahead and knock off these little burrs and give it a little brush. See if that is it. drops down. I think we are good there. Now be very careful if one side's sticking up or the other side, if it's not perfectly dropping straight down and one side stays up, that means whichever side you're on, you, you got the cut wrong. So if we would have gotten this one wrong, it would stay sticking up on the end at an angle. But that actually looks like that's it let's give it a try easy to go back together we're going to line up our little little doodad there with the little doodad receptacle down there and uh push it in and turn it back oh just like that is that it i believe so good old getting close to a hundred year old lock no not getting close a 70 year old lock he said it had been sitting up for like 30 years so we can't say even that long we'll just say 50 years of use works beautifully still and uh, once you turn it it engages the contacts and fires up the vehicle after he after he repairs all the other problems with it so hopefully he will have luck getting it started up but now he has a key to do it so that's it on uh, the old, ye olden GM 10 cut, six cut lock, 10 cut, six cut lock. Again, I'll post some of the other ones in the end here. And if you're interested in any other videos like this, be sure and check them out. And we always have this come up in the future. Just that's how you do it. You just drill a little tiny hole. Once you put this back in, that's all you can see. So you can't really see the hole. Some people are like, oh, you should totally fill that hole in, but Nah, it's no big deal. Anyway, thanks for watching, y'all. If you have any questions or comments on this or any other videos, post them in the comments section. We'll catch y'all next video.